Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India says committed to boosting investment and crisis hit Sri Lanka. PTI demands election date after acceptance of resignations at Pakistan's National Assembly. And freezing temperatures kill more than 75 people in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar on Friday met Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe in Colombo and conveyed India's commitment to increase investment flows to hasten the debt-ridden country's economic recovery. This comes as India has told the IMF that it strongly supports Sri Lanka's debt restructuring plan, a precondition for a 2.9 billion US dollars loan. India has told Sri Lanka it is committed to boost investment in its debt-ridden neighbour to help pull the island nation from its worst economic crisis in seven decades. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar said on Friday following talks with Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe in Colombo. During his two-day visit, J. Shankar held talks with his Sri Lankan counterpart Ali Sabri regarding cooperation in infrastructure, connectivity, energy, industry and health services. On Friday, both sides also signed agreements for community development projects. India has already told the International Monetary Fund that it strongly supports Sri Lanka's debt restructuring plan, with Colombo owing around $1 billion US dollars to its nearest neighbour. Debt restructuring is essential for Sri Lanka to secure a $2.9 billion IMF bailout. India did not wait for other bilateral creditors, but did what is right for Sri Lanka's economic recovery, Jay Shankar said. We felt strongly that Sri Lanka's creditors must take proactive steps to facilitate its recovery. India decided not to wait on others, but to do what we believe is right. We extended financing assurances to the IMF to clear the way for Sri Lanka to move forward. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's Deputy Treasury Secretary Priyantha Ratnayake told reporters that discussions with China are at the final stage and they expect China's backing for debt restructuring plan within days. China is the last remaining major creditor that has yet to agree to the plan. Sri Lanka owed Chinese lenders $7.4 billion or nearly a fifth of its public external debt. By the end of last year, calculations by the China Africa Research Initiative show. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif and Russian Energy Minister Nikolai Shalginov on Thursday held talks over the possibility of Moscow supplying oil to the South Asian nation. This comes as Pakistan struggles to meet domestic energy demands and had to ration supplies to residential and commercial consumers. A Russian official said Pakistan will pay for energy purchases from Russia when they start in late March, in currencies of friendly countries. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif on Thursday met Russia's Energy Minister Nikolai Shulginov and discussed over the possibility of Moscow supplying oil and gas to the South Asian nation. According to a statement by the Pakistani government, both sides agreed on the importance of energy sector for development of bilateral relations and exchanged views on Russia supplying oil to Pakistan on a long-term basis. Earlier in 2022, Pakistani State Minister for Petroleum had said Russia would sell crude oil at a discounted rate. However, no development took place until now. Pakistan, who has not been a major importer of Russian oil and gas, has been trying to cut on imports expense due to dwindling foreign reserves. Pakistan is also unable to procure gas from the international market because spot prices remain out of its range and shipments under long-term deals remain insufficient to match its rising demand. Meanwhile, in order to revive its battered economy, Pakistan has expressed willingness to accept all the four major conditions of the International Monetary Fund. 
They are also expected to show some flexibility given the recent engagements and economic challenges posed by the post-flood situation. Local media reported, quoting a government official. With the Forex Reserve dropping to 4.3 billion US dollars, IMF bailout review, which has been stalled for months, has become essential for the cash-trapped country. More on news from Pakistan. In a dent to PTI chairman Imran Khan's demand of holding snap polls, Speaker of Pakistan's National Assembly Raja Parvez on Friday accepted resignations of 35 PTI lawmakers, taking the total count of accepted resignations in the current week to 70. The development comes after Imran Khan had announced PTI's return to the National Assembly to test PM Shehbaz Sharif through a confidence vote. Pakistan's political uncertainty continues to trouble the nation as in a fresh development. The Election Commission of Pakistan, ECP, denotified opposition PTI's 35 more members of the National Assembly after the National Assembly Speaker, Raja Parvez, on Friday accepted their resignations. In a statement, the National Assembly Secretariat said, Resignations were accepted in accordance with Clause 1 of Article 64 of the Constitution and Rules of Procedure and Conduct of Business in the Assembly. Earlier, the Speaker had stalled the resignations and asked the lawmakers to approach his office individually for verification. However, he accepted the resignations of 34 MNAs from PTI on January 17, followed by the latest move after PTI Chairman Imran Khan announced their return to the National Assembly to push PM Shehbaz Sharif for a trust vote. PTI leaders have called the Speaker's move as illegal and immoral and maintained that they will contest the election on all vacated seats. They also demanded a date for general election as well. दो असेंबलियों में और अब नेशनल असेंबली में इन्होंने इस्तीफे जो कबूल किए हैं उसके बाद पाकिस्तान में 64% पाकिस्तान इस वक्त गैर नुमाइंदा है 64% इस वक्त पाकिस्तान के लोगों ने नए मेंबरान منتخب करने हैं ये जो 36% की हुकूमत है जो इस वक्त ये जो हुकूमत बैठी हुई है ये सिर्फ 36% पाकिस्तान की वोटों को ग्रैब करके चोरी चकारी से धांधली से करके बैठी हुई है इस हकुमत को घर भेजना पाकिस्तान के मुफाद में है, अवाम के मुफाद में है और इदारों के मुफाद में है। Around 131 MNAs of PTI had resigned in mass after Imran Khan failed to secure majority in a no-confidence motion tabled in April last year. Since then, PTI has been demanding snap polls in the country, but ruling coalition has maintained the elections will be held as per schedule in late 2023. The Taliban authorities have said that as many as 78 people have died of cold in Afghanistan during the country's worst winter in more than a decade, deepening a humanitarian crisis affecting millions of people. The Taliban takeover in August 2021 has sent Afghanistan's economy into a tailspin and transformed the country, driving millions into poverty and hunger. Taliban authorities said on Thursday that at least 78 people have died in freezing conditions in eight of Afghanistan's 34 provinces in the worst winter in more than 15 years, deepening a humanitarian crisis affecting millions of people. Abdullah Ahmadi, the head of the Operations Center for Emergency Conditions at the Ministry of Disaster Management, has said that the weather will get colder in the next few days. Therefore, it is necessary to consider humanitarian aid for affected people. The Taliban takeover in August 2021 has sent Afghanistan's economy into a tailspin and transformed the country, driving millions into poverty and hunger. Many aid groups have partially suspended operations in recent weeks due to a Taliban ruling that most female NGO workers could not work, leaving agencies unable to operate many programs in the conservative country. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said on Twitter that lost livelihoods and assets further endanger Afghan families at a time when 21.2 million people urgently need continued food and agricultural support. Even in the early part of winter, health workers had reported a sharp increase 
in the number of young children suffering from serious cases of pneumonia and other respiratory diseases, in part due to worsening poverty that left people unable to properly heat their homes. In news from Nepal, Nepal's Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel on Thursday met the grieving families of the people who were killed in the deadly plane crash in Pokhara. Authorities have recovered bodies of 71 of the 72 people on board the aircraft while search for the remains of the last missing passenger continues. Nepal's Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dehel on Thursday visited the Tribhuvan University Teaching Hospital in Kathmandu and met the grieving families of the people who were killed in the deadly Yeti Airlines plane crash in Pokhara. Expressing his condolences, PM Dahel directed the hospital authorities to speed up the identification of the bodies and hand over the remaining bodies to the relatives soon, a statement said. The bodies released on Thursday included that of the pilot of the plane, Kamal Kesi, whose family performed last rites outside the Maharaj Ganj medical campus where the autopsies were being conducted. Officials in Nepal earlier on Wednesday said there was no chance of finding any survivors of the country's deadliest plane crash in 30 years, but workers will continue to search for the remains of the last missing passenger. The bodies of 71 of the 72 people who were on the aircraft had been found. The Yeti Airlines ATR-72 turboprop crashed near the tourist city of Pokhara on Sunday morning, just before it was due to land. Moving on. Hundreds of tourists have been flocking the hill station of Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory as the region has received fresh snowfall over the past few days. Mesmerized by its scenic beauty, tourists expressed their admiration for the place and called it the perfect trip. Scores of tourists are thronging the scenic ski resort town of Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory as the region has received fresh snowfall over the past few days. Gulmarg at an altitude of 8,500 feet is a bowl-shaped plateau of a lush green meadow surrounded by a thick forest. Covered from head to toe in winter wear, tourists were seen enjoying activities like snowboarding, sled rides and skiing amid the snow. Mesmerized by its scenic beauty, tourists expressed their admiration for the place and called it the perfect trip. It is beautiful. I have been here a lot of people who have been here, apart from India. Their experience is that the Gulmarg is far, far better. Switzerland is a place. It 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 is a place. You can pay for 5-6 lakh rupees to Switzerland for better than one time in Kashmir. Gulmarg at present provides a picture postcard look with snow-capped mountains, lush beautiful valleys and miniature cottages which attract most people to this place. Tourism is the mainstay of the economy of the region and Kashmir with its pristine beauty is often called the heaven on earth. India's central Raipur city held a three-day painting camp this week based on the theme of Indian mythology Ram Katha. Among the six different art forms which featured in the camp was Odissi Pattachitra, which uses a rare painting technique where both the canvas and colors are made by the artists themselves. Have a look. The Indian city of Raipur in Chhattisgarh state held a three-day painting camp this week based on the theme of Indian mythology Ram Katha. Traditional artists from six different states of India joined the camp and taught the nuances of their art. Kalidas Saman awardee Prehlad Maharana was among the artists who were invited by the painting camp organizers to showcase a rare painting technique of Odissi Patachitra. Maharana said the painting they make are based on ancient Indian text Purana. We make the canvas of the painting and colors ourselves. These are not available in the market, he said. Talking about the art form, he said the specialty in this form is that every painting is done in a way that it has a story sequence. When one looks at the final work, they can get to know the whole story, he added. We have a proportion of the painting. That's why painting 
जो भी पेंटिंग है आप देखो ओडिशा की जो भी पटचित्र की पेंटिंग देखो Apart from Odissi Patchitra the other art forms which featured in the camp were Cherial scroll painting Madhubani painting Ganifja Chitrakathi and Patua organizers said in coming days to promote art they will hold similar camps for other traditional and tribal art forms Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sajnewsline and follow us on twitter at sajnewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night tag tv brings you daily news bulletin from india Breaking news and views from India.